Hello and welcome to another Procreate tutorial where today I'm going to show you how to create this creepy graveyard design. Now as always this links to everything you're going to need in the description down below, the canvas size and the palette and everything else is built into Procreate. If you didn't already know I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel so make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and if you want even more tutorials from me you can come and join me over on Patreon where I post three more exclusive tutorials to my Patreon supporters every single month and the catalogue sits at over 80 at the time of recording. So be sure to check that out, links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy the tutorial, and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we'll do in our palette, we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here in the bottom right of the palette, and drag it onto the page. Then we're gonna go up to our actions, we're gonna turn on our drawing guide, so under canvas, drawing guide, and edit the drawing guide to a 2D grid using a 500 by 500. Now if you change your canvas size, you'll just need to make sure you've got four across, so four across and four down. What this does is when I hit done, is it just allows us all to just see where I'm positioning things and you can scale things against the grid. So use it, throughout the tutorial to sort of measure things against what I'm drawing. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create our moon first of all. So we'll create a new layer. We'll go to our colors and we will grab this color here, the bottom of that second column from the right. We're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna go into the option of calligraphy and we'll just use the monoline brush. Now it doesn't matter what size your brush is. All you need to do is make a circle. So start up here, draw a circle that's pretty much two squares across and hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's a nice perfect circle and roughly this sort of scale will do. Again, making sure your two across is pretty good, two tiles, drag and drop your color in. And then we're gonna grab our cursor, we're gonna move it up and we're gonna get rid of sort of the top surface of it. Then we're gonna move it up towards here until roughly the bottom is running through the middle of this row here. So this sort of size is pretty good. And tap on your cursor when you're done. While we're working on the moon, we'll go ahead and create a new layer in front of it. We'll go ahead and tap on this layer and clipping mask it. And we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab the color above it. So the second color in that second column from the right. And your brush wants to be set to the option of textures and grunge. Now with this set to any sort of size, I've got it around about sort of 56, something kind of large. Just want you to sort of just very lightly just run over your moon here and just create some random darker patches. Not too many, but just enough so that we can just vary up the surface a little bit, making it a little bit more unique and have a little bit more sort of uh, texture to it. A little something like this coming from the top as well. Don't be afraid to sort of be a little bit bolder where you can. Just a few sort of splatters here and you can always revert back to that bottom color in that second column from the right and go back over them and sort of patch in some brighter areas if needs be, or just blend some stuff, it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna go for something like this, and if I zoom in for you, you can see that there. So now with that done, we're gonna to go to our layers, we're gonna to go to the bottom, so the actual shape for the moon, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, and the bottom one out the two, tap on it and change the blend mode from normal to add, and go to your adjustments and go to the option of Gaussian blur, and swipe from left to right, giving it a lovely little bit of a glow, now we only want to go up to something around about sort of 17%. We've got other colors that we can introduce in a moment. And just in sort of apprehension of what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and tap on it and lower down the opacity down to about sort of 60%. You may want to come back to that and adjust it later. Now, if you want to save on your layers, you can go ahead and tap on this top texture now and you can merge it down to the actual moon shape. And you can swipe from left to right on both of these, group them together and rename this and call it moon. I'm always in the habit at the minute of doing this in tutorials just so that we can make bigger and better designs, but keep things nice and organized and people don't get lost in their layers. Now, if we actually go down to our background here, we're gonna create a new layer in front of it and then swipe from left to right on both of these and group them together and we'll rename this and we'll call this, we'll call this BG, which is for background. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and in front of our moon, we're gonna go ahead and create two new layers, start from left to right on both of those and group them together and rename this and call this ground. So we're just getting a few things in place now. So with the ground, the bottom layer in the ground group, go to your colors. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab this color here, the bottom of uh, that fourth column from the right there. 
we're going to go to our brush we're going to go to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush now we're going to make the size and i think something around about maybe 20 percent is pretty good because i want it to sort of blend out we're going to make our floor sort of roughly go up to the middle point in this row here so i'm going to go left to right here and zoom out a little bit and you can see that sort of change in contrast and then as we get towards that middle point i'm going to maybe sort of just wobble it along there just to try and feather out that line a little bit don't worry too much though because we've got other colors to add the only thing i want to do is just make sure towards the bottom it's nice and full then what we're going to go ahead and do is in this ground group we're going to go up to the layer above we'll tap on it and we will clipping mask it We'll go to our colors and we're going to grab the color above this color here so the middle color in that fourth column from the right we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to use painting and the main sort of focus for today's design which is the spectra brush now the size for this brush you probably want to make it quite large maybe around about sort of 24 percent just enough that we can get some texture i want you to press really lightly and just kind of run this pen through the ground a little bit and then what it will do is you can just about see these sort of very, very light areas of texture on the ground. You should be able to see it in your own work a little bit more. You can see there's a little bit of sort of variation in the surfaces. I can press a little bit firmer in certain areas potentially, to be honest, but a little something like that, just to give some background color. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create another new layer and we're gonna go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and move up a color to the top of that column there, fourth column from the right. Your brush wants to be in the painting section, but the stucco brush. And we're gonna make the brush size probably around about sort of 25%. We're gonna go left to right across the entirety of our canvas, left to right. And then as you get closer towards the top, just let your pressure get a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter so you've got more texture towards the bottom. And don't be afraid to sort of create sort of patches in there. This is ground texture. Then we're gonna to go to our cursor. We're gonna go ahead and use distort. And we're going to drag the top node down so bring it perfectly down if you can and try and line it up with sort of the edge of your ground we'll clip it in a moment and if we zoom out i just want you to go ahead and grab the bottom right node stretch that out grab the bottom left node stretch that out too until your ground is somewhat facing now if you actually take a look at my grid point here, you can see this left one is actually slightly less over to the left and the middle node is slightly over to the right merely because in the stucco brush there's some lines here in the actual texture and that actually looks like it runs a bit more sort of directly towards me so i'm going to tap on my cursor when i'm done now we will come back to this layer later on and add a mask to it and fade it down a little bit so don't worry if the colors are a little bit bright for now so for a minute tap on it and we'll clipping mask it into the ground what we're then going to go ahead and do is in our background group down here we created an extra layer because we've actually got some more colors that we need to introduce here so on this empty layer in our background group, we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab the middle color in that far right column. And we're gonna to go to our brush and go back to airbrushing and the soft brush So airbrushing, soft brush, size wise. We've got it around about 20% for now. The original color that we have as our background, we wanna kind of leave in the top left corner and the top right corner. So I'm gonna go around my moon here and bring some lighting down a little bit into these spaces down below and just sort of kind of creating like a bit of a fan shape almost sort of bringing the color especially down towards the middle a little bit more and then in the corners just sort of fade that out so you've got a dark color up in the top right corner and then you've got more of a glow towards the center we're then going to go ahead and go to our layers we'll create another new layer we'll go to our colors we will go ahead and grab this color here it is the top of that second column from the right and we're going to introduce some cool green color now so just round behind your moon go round very lightly to start with and build up the color and then kind of just start to push that down again towards what will be our graveyard and kind of just create like a big chunk of color in behind and then fade it out behind the moon. It's going to give it a cool little look to it. And if we reduce the brush size maybe down to sort of about sort of nine to five percent, something in that range, if you just very, very lightly with your pen, just sort of push it outwards and just very lightly just create some sort of trailing color in the sky off to the left and off to the right just to vary up that sort of sky look and then we're going to go ahead and create another new layer in here we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the top right color in the palette and just like before probably up to about sort of 15 percent just round up behind our moon now so your colors should essentially go top left is our base color through to that light gray then into that green and then into this green now and then this one's going to sit sort of very close in behind our moon in behind under here you can really sort of 
bring this green out a bit more if you like but this is that one that gives the moon that just real creepy kind of glow and just like before once you've done enough you can just maybe bring your pen down to about sort of six percent and again just sort of bring in some random sort of trails out of the green off to the left and off to the right just creating so almost like clouds almost in the sky just those really kind of eerie kind of look to it just going to make sure in the center here it's nice and bright and green nice and bright and green and then maybe even left and right across our sort of groundwork here as well lovely stuff that is your background at this point if you are happy with it you can pinch all of your background together or you can go ahead and just leave it in that folder now we're going to go ahead and move on to adding in a gravestone so we're going to go ahead and in our layers we'll collapse our ground group down for a moment we're going to go ahead and create a new layer at the top we're going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this color here it is the middle color in the fifth column from the left so it's this color here if you can see on the screen we're going to go to our brush we're going to go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush and I'm going to go ahead and with a brush size probably around about sort of 20% we're going to draw in sort of a, a gravestone now starting roughly here you can see my grid lines and I only want to kind of draw a box in this space here so I'm going to start here and I'm going to just make my way up and then sort of curve that round at the top bring in another curve and then bring that down and then just down a little bit further than the other side and you can just draw in a sort of not so straight line and link them together and drag and drop your color in that way it faces off towards our light source and kind of gives a little bit more of a sort of aim towards a central point almost like a bit of perspective really now you can if you need to just go to your cursor you could warp it you could distort it you know you could bring that corner down just a little bit if needs be i'm going to bring mine down just a little bit like so then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front of it tap on it and clipping mask it we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab the top color in that column of colors so it's the top of the fifth column and your brush wants to be set to the option of painting and we're going to use the spectra brush with our brush set to something a little bit sort of more manageable probably around about sort of that's probably still even too big we'll probably go down to around about five what we want to do is we want to create a bit of a side profile of the tombstone so i'm going to go around here and i'm going to go down in a straight line that gives me the side profile there of our tombstone and then what we can go ahead and do is just with an even smaller brush size, probably around about 4%, just maybe sort of just add in a bit of color on the top because we're going to slowly try and introduce the light source. So I'm going to go down that side yet again, paint over the top of it, which also gives me some nice variation in the colors. I'm also going to go really, really lightly and go down this edge. You can see how far wide I am with my brush head of the actual stone itself. So just a little bit of color down this edge. Then we'll go ahead and I don't want to ruin that layer. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to clip and mask it. I'm going to go to my colors yet again. And I'm going to grab the middle color on the fourth column. And with this, we're going to go ahead and add in our brightest light source, which is going to somewhat just trickle over the right edge pretty much. And then over the top surface. And again, we can keep a very, 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 very thin line of color just around the top surface there just to highlight the edge now if you want to you can then also go ahead and if we go down to the base shape for it we can tap on it and we can alpha lock it so we don't have to paint outside of its boundaries and we can go to our colors we can grab the bottom color in the fifth column your brush can be sort of around about seven percent and you can just randomly just very lightly and you'll probably only be able to see this on your screen potentially because I can barely see it on my own if I'm honest it's just running this through just to create some variation in the stone so you could leave a little bit of blue. I can barely see it, but that's just like a nice little bit of texture. You can also jump to the top color in that fifth column and be really, really light with it and do exactly the same. So, you know, run your pen through here. Not too strong, not too sort of crazy in any way, just enough so that you can see like a little bit of variation on the back of the stone. And you can just about see that on my screen there. Now, that is our tombstone done. What we can now go ahead and do is go to our layers and if you're happy with it you can pinch all three together so just pinch all three together then we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this one as one that we can come back to multiple times so we're going to go ahead and swipe it to the left and duplicate it and then the bottom one out the two always the bottom one grab your cursor grab the uniform option here scale it down in size a little bit and then we're going to move it into its next position so we're going to duplicate the same layer so we don't have to redo it 
Now it's up to you, you can distort it a little bit, you can make it a little bit narrower, you could bring like that top point down a little bit more again, just so that they're all a little bit different, but they should have that sort of peaked right side on this left side of our canvas anyway. Now this one can sit a little bit higher and it kind of wants to sit above or touching even that middle cross line there. So the second row up, the top of it should kind of touch there. And then you can go to your layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one again out the two, grab your cursor and repeat. So use the uniform option, scale it down in size a little bit and move this one over into the distance back here. And it's gonna trickle over that top line and sit a little bit further in the distance again. And again, you can grab distort, maybe bring that top right node down just a little bit. You can make it a little bit narrower. You could really sort of change it up if you want to. You can redraw them even if you want to too. I'm gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done. And that kind of gives you that graveyard look all looking at the moon. Now, of course, we can go ahead and repeat this on the opposite side. So we're gonna grab our top layer in this group. We're gonna swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're gonna go ahead and grab our cursor. We're gonna flip it horizontally using this option down here and then drag it over to the right hand side and repeat. Now we don't wanna sort of position it exactly the same as the other one. So you can see that there's a little bit of a gap here against the grid. I'm gonna move this right one just over that line ever so slightly. So it just is a little bit sort of more narrow, a little bit like this. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. And then just like we did on the opposite side, we'll duplicate this and sort of move it around. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that layer. So it's the top one here I can see. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Now it's important that we then drag it down so it is then the third stone in the sequence. So the top two should be the front two. You can turn them on and off and you just wanna triple check that that is the case. If you turn them both off, you can see them flashing. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is with this third stone in the sequence, with it turned on, I'm gonna grab my cursor and we're gonna move this one over to the right hand side. So I'm gonna grab uniform, scale it down in size a little bit and move it over to the right side of our canvas and a little bit above that line. I'm gonna grab distort, I'm gonna make it a little bit narrower again, but I'm gonna leave that peak on the left a little bit higher. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And then I'm gonna drag it so that it is the bottom stone in all of the sequences. So we've got six stones now in total and the bottom one here is the last one we're gonna do it with. We're gonna grab our cursor, use uniform, scale it down in size just a little bit. And we're gonna position this one just here and over that sort of uh, middle row line there, grid line, and then we can grab this door, we can maybe sort of squish this down a little bit, make it a little bit narrower, potentially, and tap on your cursor when you're done. So you've got your graveyard and it just keep, creates like a little bit of sort of a random formation left to right. Now, we've organized them in a way, if I zoom right out and keep my layers in, I've got the furthest stones at the bottom, so we've got six stones in total. You want your furthest stones at the back, pinch them together. Then you've got your mid stones. See them there? I'm gonna pinch them together. And then we've got our top stones here, which will be the front ones. And we're gonna pinch them together too, because we're gonna layer some effects in between these. So now that they are layered together, you can nicely slot in the effects. So now you should have three layers now with your stones all layered nicely together. If we swipe from left to right on all of them, we can group them together and we can go up to the option here of rename and we'll call this stones. Now we've layered them like this because we're gonna bring in some color from the sky and sort of the mist to try and break down the sort of solid shapes here and add a little bit more atmosphere. So in front of our bottom set of stones here, we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the top color here in that second column from the right. Your brush wants to be set back to airbrushing in the soft brush and we're gonna introduce some wavy sort of misty lines back here. So we're gonna end up sort of really sort of taking these down quite a lot. And what I mean by that is they're gonna get sort of really lost in the distance. I want that, I want that whole graveyard towards the back area to really be quite foggy and you can't really see too much. Maybe just sort of the top of the stones. And what I'm doing is I'm going left to right, left to right sort of wobbling my pen up and down. And I wanna sort of really fade out the top or even the bottom edges of our sort of grave there. And I'm gonna bring that brush size down to about sort of 5% and just wiggle in like the odd little higher line. That's fine, just a little bit of higher mist and fog. It's a little bit like that just to create some more atmosphere. And then along the floor here as well, just in behind 
sort of these stones here, your midstones. If you just wobble your pen here, you'll just create that fog that's just sitting on the surface. Then what we'll do is we'll create another new layer. Go to your colors and grab the top color in that top right corner of the palette. With the brush eyes still set to around about sort of 5%, you can get in here now and really kind of create some variation in the color. You could even go smaller than that, I would imagine, run about sort of 4% and just wiggle in some sort of color there. And that's what we want. We want that lovely sort of top level of the fog, just some nice variation in the color. That's cool. And then maybe a little bit off to the right. That's fine by me, nothing too sort of intense. And we can maybe even reduce that brush size down to about sort of three and maybe just try and create a little bit of a line there. Then what you can do, you can pinch those last two layers together if you like, you can pinch them together. And then in front of our mid stones, we'll create another new layer and basically repeat the same steps. We're gonna to go to our color and we'll grab the top of that second column from the right. Brush eyes probably around about sort of five, maybe 6%. And we're gonna go ahead and go left to right really lightly to start with. I want you to try and focus on sort of mainly covering up sort of the bottom area of the stone and bringing that fog along the ground bringing it a little bit closer towards us, leaving the tops of the stones. And those ones in the distance, you can see there that you've got that awesome little atmosphere. You can barely see them at that point. I'm just going left to right, left to right, just kind of just bringing in a little bit on the stones. And it doesn't need to be as heavy as the last layer. So you can bring it in a little bit, nothing too crazy. But as we get closer to the front here, we're not going to have any fog. So it's just there in the distance. Now, we're actually done creating the atmosphere. What we're now gonna go ahead and do is create the shadows for our stones on the ground. So we can go ahead and we can collapse our stones group down. We can open up our ground and we can create a new layer in front of all the ground group. Tap on it and clipping mask it too. And then go to your colors and we're gonna go ahead and grab the middle color here in the fifth column. Now you can go ahead and create a awesome shadow. So look at the line from where the center of your sun, uh, moon is, should I say. If you were to draw a line and then hold your pen down, that is the exact angle that the stone would be shadowing along the floor. A little something like that. And that's a really simple, easy trick. You can hold down from the center. Sometimes you may have to delete sort of a little bit of excess. You know, if I was to do it on this side, if I draw that through, I may get, see that line here just above, my stone i'd have to get rid of that but what that does is that gives you that perfect angle of where your shadow should sit so i can go ahead and then down here fill that in put my lovely shadow in there i'll put a lovely shadow in behind this one too and really drag that along the floor and then i'll just go in with my eraser soft airbrush and just get rid of the shadow in front of the stone because that doesn't fit so that's a really simple way of doing a shadow based on sort of an angle that you need to match up to. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move into our main subject in the center. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna collapse the ground group down. We're gonna move up in our layers right to the top. We'll create two new layers. We'll start from left to right and we'll group them together and we'll rename this and we will call it subject. Now, I don't normally do this in my tutorials, but I'm gonna sketch it out and we can then sort of lay it all out together in a similar fashion. So on the bottom empty layer in here, with the dark color still selected, this color here, you may wanna pick a different color. In fact, let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab a bright yellow here in the top right. So I've just grabbed any bright yellow just so you can see it on the screen nice and easily. Let me make that a little bit more orange. Then go to my brush. I'm gonna to go to sketching and I always use the 6B pencil. Either one is fine. And size, again, doesn't really somewhat matter. I'm gonna make it big enough that you can see, so about sort of 20%. And I want you to take a look at my grid and where I start to lay it out. Now, I wanna draw out the center of the hood first. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm actually gonna go ahead and on this empty layer, I'm gonna to go to my color first of all, double tap at the bottom to black, and then drag it onto the screen. And then I'm just gonna bring the opacity down of that layer. So what I'm doing here is I've filled the whole layer with black just to dull out the background. So while I'm sketching, I can see my next sort of phase a little bit better. So if I go up to this empty layer in front, this black layer is temporary. We're gonna to go to that yellow again, that yellowy gold, back to the brush, making sure it's still the pencil. And now you can see everything. You don't have any sort of colors interfering with your sketch lines. Now we're gonna primarily sort of draw in a face around about here. So we're looking for this crosshair of where our 
uh, grid sits and you want to kind of just make it a little bit more pointy at the top and then have a little bit of a rounded sort of shape towards the bottom. So I'm going to go around here. By the way, if you want to skip this phase of the design, you can go ahead and download the stencil that's in the description down below. You can jump straight to my finished stencil and you can carry on with the tutorial from there. You'll also have a timestamp in the bottom there in case you want to go ahead and just jump straight to it. So that's going to be the center of the hood. I'm then going to go ahead and from there, I'm going to create a very sort of narrow, narrow line here, which is then going to be the material. And then it gets a little bit bulkier at the top, a little bit bulkier up here, comes round. And we're going to bring that tight around the face and then down towards here. Now, once you get round to here, you can then start to sort of create very sort of loose angles here for the shoulders. And then you can go ahead and just bring this line down here, always taking a look at where my grid is. And then as you get a little bit closer down, you can then start to maybe think about how can we sort of flare this out at the bottom so that it's sort of cloak is catching on the ground. So on this side, we can create a little bit of a flick out and then round this off down here. And then maybe we'll create another one where there's another little bit of a trail and it just rolls around here. Now, don't worry too much around sort of this bottom area. It's going to be quite dark and it's going to be quite faded out. We're just trying to get that sort of little bit of a shoulder sort of portion put together. And then as the body comes in, it gets a little bit narrower towards the bottom and then flares out. And you see I'm doing lots of little mini strokes. Now, the only adjustment I want to make is just grab at my selection tool. I want to draw around the face here, tap on the dot, and then just grab my cursor and just move it a tiny bit. It needs to move off to the left and a tiny bit up to the top. And that's pretty good to me. There we go. We've got our shape here. And again, feel free to just make any adjustments. You can always go ahead and it's quite easy to use like the liquify and push. And then a large brush size, you can just maybe sort of push out the lines a little bit more. You can easily distort rather than redraw you know use some of the tools that procreate has available to you you can go ahead and just widen up the shoulders a tiny bit just want to bring that out let that sort of drape inwards push that in a tiny bit more but then towards the bottom i want to sort of really let this sort of run out a bit more push that one over here we go and if we tap on our selection tool when we're done this is going to be our finish sketch now we're going to go ahead and in our layers here we're going to go ahead and we'll delete the black layer we're going to keep our sketch there and i'm going to rename that i'll call it sketch and i'm going to create a new layer in front of it i'm going to go to my colors and i'm going to go ahead and grab the bottom color in this fifth column i'm going to go to my brush library and i'm going to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush we're going to use this brush to get everything sized up. So with brush size probably around about sort of 20%, it doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and just draw in our outline. So we're going to go ahead and just follow this up. Nice smooth lines where you can. Add some sort of bumps and lumps in there. That is also fine. I'm just going to go around the top. Following our stencil guide all the way around couple of little wobbles in there I think will look great. Really light ones though, nothing too sort of crazy. But just a couple in there will just help create the sort of material overlap in itself. And then here, I'm going to go round and then round again. And then at the bottom, you can literally just make like a wavy wobbly line. This will all be in darkness at the bottom anyway. But you can drag and drop your color in. Then we're going to go ahead and we'll just turn that layer off for a moment. We'll create another new layer. We'll go to our colors and we will go ahead and we will double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black. And we will draw in the center point here of our cloak. So where the face would sit, I'm going to create this shape here. And again, you can always use the, the liquify and push just to adjust it. I like all the sort of variations there though in the wobbles. And if you turn on your base shape now, you've now got the center point of your hood. Now, what you can do is you can go ahead and turn off your sketch. I'll keep that because I need that for later. Now, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front of our body here and tap on it and clipping mask it. Now, with this process that we're about to do now, you just need to slowly build up the color. You don't need to go ahead and do anything sort of uh, too detailed too early. So we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this middle color in that fifth column. 
We're going to go to our brush and my preference for today's design is painting and the spectra brush. Now we're going to start off a little bit sort of bulky, a little bit sort of bulky in size, around about maybe sort of 6%. And we're going to start adding in some of sort of the shadow shapes and where we want to somewhat start to think about positioning them. Now I'm going to fluctuate around about sort of four to six. Now the hood itself is going to have like a, uh, a little bit of material that sits towards the bottom. So I'm going to kind of just sort of create a little bit of a shadow underneath this sort of gap here. You see, I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap just here and then probably 4% now. I'm going to then create some sort of draping lines in the material. So just creating like a, a bit of a divot here in the middle where the material creases and then maybe it expands a little bit towards the bottom, gets a little bit sort of wider. Reducing that brush size down to about maybe 3% now, I can maybe start to think about wrapping that round up onto the hood. Again, we can then just blend it out. You don't want to make too many solid shapes. You just want to sort of block in where you think the shadows are going to be. Everybody's, by the way, is going to look different. Yours is just going to be the materials are going to be slightly sort of draped in a different way. That is perfectly fine. Do not stress over it, please. So we're going to create some straight lines down here. We'll let them kind of just blend out. You can see I'm creating basic bulk shapes. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and just create another sort of drape line here in the cloak. Little bit sort of dark line here that can blend out that's fine I can blend up onto the top of the shoulder and as you continue to do this the bits that you leave are going to ultimately be where your sort of highlights are going to sit now I can go ahead and drape this round a tiny bit more from the shoulder go ahead and drape in a little bit of color and then bring that down let that come down leaving a little bit of a gap in between then maybe we can go ahead and just sort of add in a little bit of a shadow here where maybe a hand is causing some sort of ripple in the, the material, in the cloak. And you see we're just slowly creating shadow, base color, shadow, base color, shadow, base color, and just creating all the sort of creases and curves in the material. I'm gonna go ahead and start over here now on the left-hand side and really kind of bring in a bit of a darker shape. I'm gonna increase the brush size up to around about sort of 5%. I'm gonna bring in a much darker area, pushing that in from the, the shoulder area then maybe creating sort of another one again just like here where the hand maybe is in behind and then where we've got this little flick here you know we kind of want to separate them so where we've got the little flick on the side I'm going to sort of create a little bit of a curve let me just zoom in for you I'm going to follow the curve and then let that sort of run up and I'm going to let that kind of run in behind like it just runs away from us and away from camera I always imagine that what we're drawing is always like a photograph. So, you know, while that runs around the opposite side, it now runs onto the back of the subject. We'll do the same down here. Now, again, I don't really want you to focus too much attention down here, but you know, like as it sort of drapes along the floor, we can create some little sort of ripples along the bottom edge and let them kind of just run up and blend out up in towards the rest of the cloak. Leaving the top edges, as you can just about see, the top edges there, a little bit uh, lighter. Now I've just adjusted my camera so you should be able to get a little bit more of the sort of brightness come through now uh, so it's not quite so dark. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and create another line here. It is gonna run. And it doesn't always have to run towards the bottom. It can just be a crease that then just disappears like a fold in the material. So like a little bit here. And I'm trying to be bold with it and just chuck the color in. Then we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit more detailed at the top here, about 2%. I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap this round, sort of what is the sort of uh, main framing around our hood, and I can flick that off to the left a little bit, like so. Little something like this, I've gone up here, leaving this area here. It's like a perfect sort of line around this area. And then I'm gonna darken up and blend out. So I'm darkening up here, and then blending that out towards the top of the hood. Over here on the right, we'll go ahead and just maybe create another crease in here, another fold. This one gets a little bit closer to the face, but that's fine, I don't mind that. And if we zoom out, we've got so much texture in here now in terms of like the movement in the material, it's looking great, it's a great start. We can then just bring in some more darker tones towards the bottom, little sort of flare outs towards the bottom. So it kind of flicks out let the sort of darker tones just flick out again. 
please don't stress at the bottom in any sense. I'm going to darken this up right right up towards that sort of very dark tone so you won't see any of it right at the very bottom. But ultimately you should have like a really good start like this and we can bulk up those shadows so where we know that they're going to be quite dark go back in and just maybe darken up a few like quite dark lines be bold with it and chuck in some fine two percent brush lines in here like a two percent here maybe a, another two percent there and then in your larger shadow areas don't be afraid to really darken up what you think is going to be the core of this like your core of your shadowy areas darken that up darken that up too now, once you've got this draping effect happening here, you can then go to your colors and you can grab the top color in this column, top of the fifth column and repeat, except now, you're, now you've got your guide, you're basically adding these highlights into the gaps where you've got your base color, not filling in everything, but adding in some more uh, color here will just help the curves of the material. So if we go up to around about sort of two or 3%, we can start to, Think about, well, here, where I've added in this bold line here, I imagine that then the material is just very harshly folding back on itself. So I'm going to brush in some color down here, keeping it really light with the spectra brush, and you can blend in towards your shadows. Please blend in towards your shadows. It just helps in some areas get rid of the harshness of it. In some areas, it should be bold, such as here. But just adding in a little bit of extra color here now, will just help us understand all of those little curves and wrinkles in the material even more so. And you can bring them down towards the bottom. Again, later on, it will be covered up anyway. But I'm blending in now towards the center of that main shadow I created. And then I'm looking again for the next curve. So I'm looking for another sort of curve here where I can get really up close to that shadow area and follow the gap. I can see I've got another gap here where I've got a tiny little shadow and I can start to introduce some more color there and blend up towards and blend in the two highlighted areas together. So I've sort of brought all three of those lines in together. And look at the difference between the left and right side. Right now we've just got this kind of speckled look to it, but we're, we're going to build up, we're going to get there. So around about sort of three and two percent still. And because we've got a backlight, the edge highlights are going to somewhat be the brightest. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that the edge of our subject is going to start to sort of look a little bit brighter compared to the center area. So I'm going to slowly start to really be quite bold with my sort of blocking in of color on the edge there. I can bring that down. And again, I don't have to do every area in here. I can just do a few sort of little specks here and there of the brush. I've not gone too intensely in here, but I will then introduce sort of a, a larger bright patch down here where the light just happens to wrap around. Let's do the rest of the body then before we move on towards like the hood area. So here I'm going to introduce like a bright spot that runs through the, the gap between my shadows. And again, I don't always have to sort of blend out towards the shadows. I can leave some of the base color to do that in between. But if you do get right up close, maybe you can just sort of blend in a tiny bit different sort of, uh, you can do different approaches to different areas. If you're right up close to a shadow, you can blend them together if you need to, or you can keep it nice and harsh so that then you just make sure that the material is sort of pointing outwards towards us. Now I can see a little bit of sort of symmetry here. So I'm just going to go ahead and maybe introduce like another sort of highlight on the fly and then just kind of bring it in and then let that fade out and then blend that into the shadow in the middle. I don't want to have that symmetry of the two sides. So that extra crease now just sort of changes up the shape a bit more. And we'll do the same over here. So push down into here. And I've got some big shadow areas in this area here. And I'm going to leave them. I'm going to let them have some nice dominating space because I've got the edges that this color can be the brightest at. So I don't need to let sort of the shadows get sort of too diminished in the center because we've got so many highlights that can go on the edge to really highlight it from behind. So I'm gonna go over the top of the shoulder here and then start to think about with a larger brush size about 4%, just sort of pushing down the color. Now I'm not gonna go around the neck, of course, cause I want that to be nice and dark around there. And then if I go down to about sort of 2%, we've got this little bit that flicks out. I want this to be nice and bright, almost as bright as the top edge, 
because it's out on its own, out on the side. It's going to get some highlights of some sort. So I can add some there and I'll maybe add some onto this area here just behind it. A little bit of a curve in here. And then you should end up with some lovely sort of trailing effect down here. Again, not interested in this space. Now I'm going to move up to the hood now. And I'm just going to go around here, nice and light, but with a good, somewhat quite good amount of colour. I'm going to go right around the edge. So I'm quite inside the shape here. And then with an even smaller, maybe 2% brush size, I'm going to go right up towards those shadows and try and sort of blend in towards them a little bit. Not blending down, but kind of just creating this harsh, quite solid line with the highlight up here. So I've got a little sort of gap here. That's great. That's the base color coming through. Love that. And then at the top, we need to introduce some more highlight because the light is right behind. So I'm going to go ahead now and just block in a large space up here on the left and let that sort of run down the side of the head there. I'm going to really block that in there. And I'm looking for where my shadows were still. So I can go ahead and maybe reduce the brush size down to about 2% again now to be more accurate and sort of move down into here. But then over here, I can maybe introduce a couple more sort of drag lines and crease lines in the material making sure that the top edge up here is nice and bright. Now I say bright, we've got more colors to add in, but for a minute, this is the brightest tone that we've got so far. I'm gonna push down in towards my shadows there. Lovely stuff. And then we should have a really cool outline around the top. Now, if you want to, you can always reduce your brush size down to like a 1% and get really fine in here. And please feel free to sort of spend as long as you like on this getting in with like a 1% and just adding in some fine line details in here. So where your highlights are, I've got a 1% brush size now, and I'm just going in here and just adding in some, some arguably more detailed fine edges where some of those lines may be. And in your lightest areas, I can go ahead and maybe just, just drag in a few sort of minor creases in here, nothing sort of too big based on the shape, of sort of the main sort of cloak in the middle, but these odd tiny little lines here and there will just help you sort of add in maybe just the odd sort of extra sharpening that it may need or just the odd sort of extra detail that will just help it sort of stand out and you can flick off very small lines here and there. You can get a little bit closer to your shadows, like a little bit like this, and a little bit more like this. And I'm just trying to be a little bit more detailed now in these areas, just seeing what sort of extra little points we can do. And I think that's it. So at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and move into our next layer. So we're gonna create a new layer, tap on it, and we'll clipping mask it also. We'll change our color. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the top of the fourth column. Our brush wants to probably still be around about 2%, because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add sort of very fine highlights. I'm going to go ahead, for example, and go around this edge here of the uh, mask and the sort of center point here of the cloak. I'm going to go around here, brightening this up. And I'm sort of looking for areas that I think on top of my highlights that I added before, can I add some extra highlight on them? Can they get some extra lighting from our light source? So a little bit on here. Then I'm going to go ahead and make the brush size around about sort of 2% and then brighten up on top of the head. I'll push that down and up here is going to be quite bright so I can go right around the edge as well and draw on top now because we're sort of streaking with this brush and you can by the way just block in like a large area be brave with it chuck the color on you can sort of build up on top but because we're streaking we're going to get lots of sort of residue from the previous color and this color so now your colors are going to start to have even more sort of color depth to them we can go along the edge here and sort of bring in a little bit more color, maybe a little bit up here too, as it rolls over the shoulders. And we don't wanna to add too much towards the center with this color. This one here is just gonna be the top of the shoulders and the top of the head. And then what we'll do is on the same layer, we'll go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here. It is the middle color in that fourth column. Now, as you can see, this is very, very bright compared to the other ones. So. You can, if you want to create a separate layer and then lower the opacity down, I'll do that just in case. So I'll create a new layer, I'll tap on it and I'll clipping mask it just in case I wanna lower the opacity down later. And I'm gonna go ahead and get to the brightest spots again. So I'm gonna go in here, go around the top of the head and I'm looking for where I painted in before 
and I'm painting it in now with this color. And you're gonna get more of that speckled painting look as well, which I quite like the look of. Keeps it a little bit less real, a little bit less daunting. I'm gonna go down the edge here of the cloak because that moon is brightening up this edge quite a bit. I'm gonna go down here over the shoulder and if you add in these lovely edge highlights, you're gonna really help that light source show that it's just brightening up our subject, but from behind. You can then come down here, for example, and that one's probably a little bit too firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just brighten that up a tiny bit. I'm gonna go over the top of this little trail bit that we had in the corner, push that up and maybe a tiny bit more on there too. And it's totally up to you now if you wanna get even further into the design. For example, you could maybe add like a tiny bit around here, around the edge of the mask. You could go back in over the top of your highlights. Now, to be honest, I don't really wanna to get too mad into those. You know, I could add the odd tiny little bit here and there where the light somehow is just, you know, bouncing around, you know, into our subject. Maybe adding in a little bit more on the edge down here and then just letting that fade out. I could maybe add a little bit more on here too. And you can see I'm sometimes being a little bit sort of messy and random with it. Now, I don't want to brighten up our subject too much. I want it to be quite dark, but with the edge highlights. So just make sure that your edges are nice and bright. You know, be a bit bold with it until you end up with something like this. So now we're actually done with our subject. So no more worrying over that. We can then go ahead. And if you want to, you can collapse your layers down for your subject. You can tap on it and flatten it. We're gonna go ahead and do some extra little effects as well. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab that middle color in that uh, fifth column. Your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. And with a brush size probably around about sort of 15%, you're gonna go ahead and darken up the bottom of the design. Just as we said before, we wanna just darken it up at the bottom here. And you can push this lightly up your subject as well. Do as much or as little as you like here. You know, you could really darken up the center. It's totally up to you, but you've done a lot of work on the material, so don't do too much. Then we're gonna to go to our layers. Now, if we open up our ground group, earlier on, we created this stucco layer with all the texture for the ground. If we tap on that and we add a mask to it, make sure you're on the mask. You'll know it because it will be the darkest blue and your color will now be set to black. If we go to our brush and we go into the option of artistic and leather wood, we're gonna use the leather wood brush at 68% opacity and a size pretty small, around about 5%. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna tap away and we're gonna darken up somewhat like in behind our stones. And what we're doing here with a very light opacity, we're taking away some of the ground uh, sort of being fully illuminated in every area. So as we sort of drag it over the surface, it's gonna slowly start to sort of take away some areas of the ground, like there may be divots in the ground but you don't have to do everywhere. Do around sort of the base of your stones and then in front of them, you can just sort of break up the ground a little bit more. Feel free to sort of lower the size of the brush as well, but we're just trying to create more divots and less of sort of a flat surface ground. And that will just hopefully break that up a little bit. Now you may need to, in your stones group, you may need to go ahead and if you alpha lock your stones themselves, with this color selected still, so the middle color here in that fifth column and a brush set to airbrushing and the soft brush, you may need to just bring your brush size down to about 6% and just very lightly at the very bottom of your stones, just get rid of some of the highlight, just a tiny bit, just at these front ones. Next, let's go ahead and add in some creepy trees to help frame our design. So if we go up to our layers, we'll collapse our stones down We'll go ahead and we will create a new layer in front of our moon. So we'll tap on our moon group and create a new layer. And we'll go to our colors. We still should have this dark color here, that middle of the fifth column. Your brush wants to be set to the option of calligraphy. And we're gonna use the brush of script. So we're gonna use the script brush. Size, I've got it set to about 13%, so I can be nice and fine with my details because it's pressure sensitive. So if you press really firm, you can get a nice solid line. And then as you let go, you can get some really wicked kind of sort of uh, very sort of twig-like um, tree lines. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a tree that's gonna come in from over here. So I'm pressing quite firm at this point now. And then I'm gonna just let sort of the, the pen get really, really light in towards our moon. And then we're gonna build upwards and outwards. And you can just create some fun, creepy looking trees, a little bit something like this. Now. Just as a sort of heads up as to why we're doing this at this stage, because we now have our subject in place, 
we didn't want to do this any earlier because if we did it earlier we may interfere with it and I don't want any of our sort of tree lines here to get anywhere near our subject in terms of we want our subject to have the amount of space it needs and deserves in this design. We only want to use these sort of trees now as a framing sort of device. So we don't want to go ahead and get sort of too close to them. We want to just allow our subject to have the dominant amount of space. So sometimes if you were to have done this too early, you might not give yourself enough space. And yes, you could have moved a layer potentially or you know adjusted things to accommodate for it. But by doing it this way, you just know now what you draw is not going to be sort of cropped out in any way. Because if I had to move this off to the left hand side here, I would lose a little bit of the design. You know, and I don't want to do that. I'm you know, spending time purposely trying to work out where I want these lines to, to run and just letting all the pressures get nice and light, etc. You know, we don't want to move it off to the left and therefore lose a little bit of the design. And then here I'm going to go ahead and try and just now move the sort of tree branches upwards and out of the frame up here. Now feel free to duplicate that and move it across or we'll just do exactly the same. So we're looking at where I came in last time. It was roughly around about here. We don't want both sides to be perfect to one another so they can be varied up to one another. That is perfectly fine. You, know, you can create one here but use the other side as a guide. Because what I always do is I want to make sure it's nice and balanced. We're going to go up this tree here. I'm going to thicken it out towards the bottom. Of course, you want your tree to always be sort of bulkier towards the base. That's why all my lines are getting really thin as they make their way up and out towards our moon here. So all the sort of twigs on the end. And I always think it looks particularly good if you can try and sort of imagine and not force it, but like draw in a branch here and then that branch just interferes and intercept, intercepts, should I say, the other branches as well it kind of just shows that they're twisting and you know they're all at really crooked angles and that looks quite cool to me I think it always looks a little bit more realistic just shows that there's like a 3d element almost to them you know like things running in behind each other as well which I think looks awesome so these are all pointing upwards I'm then going to create like a kind of wicked kind of shape where if it points down a little bit it tends to have a little bit more of a sort of spookier vibe to it I think so I'm going to go ahead and just add in a couple more here. Not getting too close to my subject, but just close enough. And I'm going to bring that tree up the side here. And then maybe another one that just runs in across here. And you can let them run out of the screen. It just shows that like, things are continuing and progressing further up the design as well. Create another one in there. And I might just run one in behind here too. And we've got some really nice spooky trees. Now what you can do is on this layer, you can tap on it, you can alpha lock it. If we go to our colors and we actually grab this middle color here in the uh, second column from the right and your brush is set to airbrushing and the soft brush, what we can do is, with the brush size probably around about sort of 15% again, you can just very lightly on the tips of the branches that run into our moon, just sort of brighten them up a little bit and they'll kind of fade out a little bit, but they'll, they should have enough color that they can stand off from the actual area there. That should just give them a little bit of a glow and you can sort of drag out that bright sort of the moon highlight a little bit off to the right and left just to fade them out a bit more and if we go ahead and go up to our actions we turn off our drawing guide we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen before we end up with today's finished design so i hope you enjoyed this spooky graveyard design as always please be sure to share your designs with me over on instagram make sure to tag me in them otherwise i won't see them in my feed so if you tag me i'll get a chance to see them and you can do one better and share your finished designs with my Discord community. Both will be linked in the description down below. So be sure to help me out by dropping a like on the video down below. Drop a comment as well to let me know what you thought of it. And subscribe, of course, for weekly Procreate tutorials. But if you want even more tutorials from me, you can come and join me over on Patreon, where I post three more exclusive tutorials every single month to my Patreon supporters. And the catalogue sits at over 80 at the time of recording. And you get access to all of them. So be sure to check that out. You can have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access, and much, much more using the link in the description down below. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.